Yo, you know what time it is. It's your boy Trevor David Jones back up at it with My Hero Academia, season six, episode 25, No Man is an Island. It turns out this was actually the season finale. Um, just dope. So without further ado, like, comment, subscribe. Let's jump right in with the positives. Okay, so Stain shows up after the whole season or the latter half of the season, just creeping around, following All Might, and he reveals his true motives. He gives All Might the plans that he came across at Tartarus, Tartarus of what's really going on with All For One and Shigaraki, but I'll get to that in a bit. It was a great scene. It showed that All Might can actually still transform a bit. He can get swole. It takes, you know, the embers of All For of One For All are still in him. He coughed up a little blood, you know, it, it clearly exerts him, but that, that One For All, what's in your DNA, it can never fully be extracted. So that was a cool scene to see. Um. All Might, he he got a little depressed. It was it was kind of an unnerving scene. It's All Might. He doesn't get depressed. So much stuff has happened in the world. It was just, you know, I guess, I to me, they kind of had to write that in. It's All Might. He got back in the game, though. That's what we like to see. And the scene also showed the legacy of All Might. So, All Might was a hero for a long time, like 40 years. And there was, like, virtually no crime, you know, during his run. It, he's the symbol of peace. And it, the lady was cleaning off his statue. His effect, like, you know, affected all the kids, all the UA kids, for all the heroes worldwide, you know, to go after this dream of peace. It's cool that they just show that he's not just like a one-off character or he's all, he was like a Superman-like like figure, but like legit. So that scene showed more of the legacy of All Might, which was really cool. And that brings that scene to a close. So we go back to UA, Deku's made it back. And the first thing they give him is a bath. And that was, an, that was an allusion to the previous scene where they said all he needed was a bath. So that was cool. I mean, and that's why the show is good because of the levity. He was running around as Vigilante Deku for probably like a couple months. And on top of everything else, he was just dirty. So <laughs> just taking a bath, that's step one. That was funny that they threw that in. That scene itself was a bit much, but we don't need to go into all that. But that was good that they did a callback and kept the levity of the show with giving him a bath. So, another great moment in that scene, Bakugo finally calls Midoriya, I think for the first time in the series, Izuku, by his first name, is really <laughs> moment, you know. That's backdooring Bakugo's apology, which was also one of the heaviest moments of the series. Just like, man, after all they've been through from when they were kids, Bakugo was just tormenting him, you know, his whole life. Um... You know, he revealed that he actually felt behind him in a lot of ways and finally came to see his transgressions. But for him to just straight up call him Izuku when he was about to call him Deku, man, crazy moment. And this scene, we now we go back to All Might in talking to the cops and they um, they touch upon radio waves. Now, if you watch a few of my other reviews, I've, I've hinted upon a couple times, radio waves is OP amongst all the quirks he uses. All for one, when he gets into the battlefield, for whatever reason, radio waves is one of the things he uses the most. And it came to the forefront yet again during this scene. All Might was like, yo, I got these uh, these plans from Stain, some stuff going down from the prison. But something's not sitting well with me. Their attacks were so synchronized, I feel like All for One and Shigaraki were synced with their thoughts, like mentally, spiritually in a way. But I've done that with with one for all but within like touching distance i was close enough to touch deku this man you know all from was locked up 500 meters beneath the ocean you know in like a concrete box like what was going on and that's when he was like yo him and the detective su sussed it out radio waves in addition to like the 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 psychic nature of the quirks and i guess all for one he can communicate with shigaraki as well you know orochimaru style voldemort style but Radio waves is was their conjecture into how they were getting it done, and it was proven basically correct. They had recorded conversations, and it looks like they were in a radio wave pattern. In addition, these conversations revealed that beside the plans that they had uncovered or heard about, um, I believe from the villain raid, they deduced that the unveiling of Shigaraki at the time of that episode will happen in about three days. They thought they had about two months, three days. It's about to go down. So, man, 
the whole episode, you know, the whole season kind of had you on pins and needles. But when they revealed that three days thing, I was like, I actually, I got a little chills now. I got to the sense of being like, it's about to pop off. And that's good. This is what you want to show to you. You want to give you some sort of emotion, sort of feeling. So definitely enjoyed that. But it's about to get scary. So then we cut over to the UN. They're like, yo, you know, it's actually about to pop off now. We got a requisition of these heroes, blah, blah, blah. But they cut to some jets, some actual jets flying through the air. And on top is a hero, female swole, like, yo, I was going to go no matter what. My master's in danger. I don't need to hear nothing else. Star and Stripe, USA's number one hero. Man, I almost lost it. That scene was just dope. The whole show has been focused on Japan, you know, that their world version of Japan, and we get to see their heroes. I think we've got to see international heroes a few times in that My Hero movie. Um, we got to see some international travel, like some action, but some actual heroes stepping in from the international stage to come and make some moves, probably the first time. But the series is about to come to a close, so it's appropriate something that big would happen. But yeah, when I saw Star and Stripe on top of that, that bomber, I was like, why is this show so tight? You never have it all figured out. Whenever you think, you know, I understand what's going on, like I got it, they always introduce another new element that just takes it to another level. That scene was just dope, man. And she's like, my master? So all that's out here teaching people? Like, and she had, obviously, the Stars and Stripes because she's from America, but similar color scheme as All Might. Um, who obviously has like a USA themed, um, you know, suit as well. The whole scene was tight. I just, yeah, they couldn't have brought the season to a close in a better way. Like I said, you always think you know what's going to happen, but you really don't. For them to do that was just, it was, uh, it was artful, super hype. And yeah, man, as it turns out, that's actually the close of season six. And I didn't realize that until I saw the episode because it's episode 25. You know, anime is usually broken down into 13 episode seasons. So I was waiting on 26, 25 episodes. But they revealed like in the little post episode thing, season seven is it. We're coming up on the series finale of My Hero Academia. Man, talk about an end of an era. Like My Hero, I've said this before, is the dominant anime of the 2010s in my, you know, honest opinion. A lot of people say it's Attack on Titan, but, you know, if you watch my videos as well, I don't really like anything gore, super creepy. So Attack on Titan, great story. I've read, you know, the story, late night wikis, but the actual show itself, just not my cup of tea. So to me, My Hero Academia is the anime of the 2010s, you know, carrying over slightly into the 2020s. And to think that it's ending is just like, where has the time gone, man? But... Yeah, yeah. In no short order, they revealed that, yes, um, season seven's it. At the end of the season, they've got three days to square up with Shigaraki and all for one. So, yeah, this is it. Somehow, some way, this is it. Room for improvement. Nothing. It was a great episode. Classic, you know, season finale. Had all the elements in there. Tied up pretty much all the loose ends. The animation was good. Heartfelt moments. Um, you know, star and stripe. No actual room for improvements. The rating. For this episode, a 10 out of 5. A 10 out of 5. It was a little more low-key, but it just had some great moments. All the animation was good. Bakugo finally calling De Deku Izuku, like just his actual first name, legendary. That's a series-defining moment, so that was cool. And Star and Stripe, just that reveal out of nowhere. Um, yeah, and just the hypeness of the scene, it gets a 10 out of 5. Okay, now, now on to the Season 6 recap. So whenever I reach the end of a season of a particular show, I, I go ahead and, you know, talk about the whole, the season as a whole and review that. Season six was easily the best season of My Hero Academia. Um, they had a couple moments, a couple dips there in the middle, but we don't need to go over that. This season, it was just great. The animation was at top tier. They had a lot of movie, not movie-like moments, like literal um, scenes, cells pulled out of a movie, how they would animate a movie. In this season, the drawings were dope. The emotion was all there. There's literally nothing I could take away from the season. The action, just crazy. The whole season. And it was split into two parts, and it was done masterfully. It could basically basically be broken down as the battle with Shigaraki. That was the first half of season one, like the first, I guess, 13 episodes or so. And then the Tartarus slash Vigilante Deku arc. Um, yeah. The battle with Shigaraki, the first half of the season, that took place over about an hour. 
So like in their time, that whole, those 13 episodes was in a time span of about an hour. Like that's how quick the events were. Whereas the latter half of the season, um, 13, 12 episodes, took place over the source over the course of like several months. So, you know, somewhere around there. So that was cool. Just the time dilation effect. That was dope just by itself. It just had so many elements in there. This season also just by itself had a lot of the best moments of the entire series just in this season. Only a few moments in the series can top what happened in this season individually. Obviously, All Might versus All for One. I mean, that's like series defining, era defining of animation. Um, you know, Deku versus Overhaul. Good God. Yeah, stuff like that. But this this season had, it had, you know, um, Shigaraki versus Deku. It had Deku versus Class A when they were making the bridge and like finally caught up to him. I was like, I like busted out crying during that part. Um, Bakugo apologizing to Deku? Bro, this, that, that was, these are like the moments of the series. And all these happened in this season. It was just dope. It was just dope from top to bottom. Um, there have been a lot of great moments, but this is definitely the best season so far. So the season rating, after seeing all the episodes, reviewing all the episodes, what do I think? A six out of five. A six out of five. It slightly breaks the scale. Um, yeah, for everything I just mentioned above, the animation, bless you, the, um, the drawings, the moments, it was all there. This is the best season of My Hero Academia and obviously cannot wait for season seven. A little sad, but can't wait for it. And that's it. Check out my previous My Hero Academia review, episode 24. So the penultimate season finale. Go check that out. Obviously it's great. The whole season's great. Previous Mandalorian. Mandalorian, one of the dopest things on TV that you can watch right now. I've got some things to say about it and I'm gonna get to that in my, my continuing reviews of the series. But check out my previous review. It's a great, it's like an all time show, but I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know. I'm gonna let y'all know what's up with it. My previous Lego, which is actually the Lego Thai Bomber here. My favorite recent build, um, just an overall great set. Super clean, gorgeous, beautifully designed, Star Wars Lego. You know what they do, we, we out here. Go check that out. I got some more Lego coming up for you real soon. TDJ recommendations, Google Five, I'm not sponsored. It's just the best cell phone service. It's got True International, True Unlimited. I mean, you just can't go wrong with it. So check out Google Fi, use my little discount code. You get some money off your bill. We are we all about here trying to save money. That's a top tier goal, so check that out. And that's it. At the time of recording this, Guardians 3 comes out here in just a couple weeks. You know, I got y'all on that. The MCU, MCU's been going through some tough times. <laughs> I'm gonna just say it like that. I'm one of the I'm one of the the standard bearers for the MCU, man. Like it's just it's just great. Um, but I think I think some things are going on. You know what I'm saying? But regardless, like I said in an even earlier review, I've been reading comics since I was this high, you know, this tall. Um, I'm not. I'm never gonna stop reading comics. Uh, so even if these movies somehow imploded. I'm gonna just stop it right there. Anyways, yeah, I'm always being into the comic, the Imaginist culture, regardless. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna review that movie and we will go from there. And on that note, like I always say, because I genuinely mean it, stay up. You, ne you never wanna be this way in life, never. Always this way, stay up. And I'm gonna catch you on the next one, which will be very soon, that's facts. And until then, peace.